This is Sycamore Spotlight, where we talk all things Sycamore basketball. Presented by Team Green Law. Welcome to Sycamore Spotlight. We are, of course, talking all things basketball. He is the head basketball coach of the ISU Sycamores, Josh Schertz. Coach, welcome back. Happy to have you on this week's show. I'm glad to be back. It's uh, it's good to be back. It's been a while, so nice Get, to catch up. Get into the ba basketball mode big time as we move towards December and January. We're going to touch on that in just a bit. Hey, we are, ISU is off to a 9-1 and one start on the college basketball season. Kind of called it a start, but 10 games. Hey, that's a big start. After the big win against Southern Indiana this past weekend inside Holman Center, Coach, how does it feel to be 9-1 and one for the second year in a row. Yeah, I was going to say deja vu, right? Hopefully uh, with a, a, a better follow-up. You know, uh, last year we, we went through this, uh, had a great start, and I thought we, you know, lost a little bit of momentum. Uh, you know, Coop got hurt. Um, we weren't quite as good. Uh, lost, you know, our last three going to break. So um, we talked a little bit about that, you know, learning uh, from last year. Um, increased intention always when you're winning. You know, we talk a lot about um, seasons are noisy. You know, they are, and they're noisy when you're winning. And they're noisy when you're losing. And uh, whether that's criticism or praise or whatever the case may be, um, you know, the, the key is to try to stay level-headed through it all, uh, not allow the distractions to distract you. They're only distractions if you allow them to be. And to stay focused on the things that have allowed us to have success so far. And, you know, the, the deal is if, 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 you know, on December, whatever it is, uh, if we're the best team in the Valley, that's great. Uh, but then everybody's going to be, you know, working to catch us and pass us. So the key to staying the best would be to get in, get to work, continue to improve, and try to continue to, you know, reach our ceiling when it matters most. And if we're not the best team in the Valley right now, um, then the key to catching whoever's ahead of us is to get in, get to work, uh, try to improve, be better. And so um, either way, um, it's the same process. And, and I think, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great start, um, but it's just that, you know, and now it's time to build on it. And I think this team's got the capabilities to handle, um, you know, all of the, the stuff coming its way. Got a lot of fun stuff coming this way. Before we do that, let's take a look back. Sycamores with impressive wins over SIU at Bradley and at home against USI. Doing some improvement to that 9-1 and one start. Let's start with Julian Larry's dunk against SIU. This was a top four play on Sports Center. I know it's been a little bit since it's happened, but yeah. rocking the rim that night at Holman Center, Coach. Yeah, no, Julian's such an explosive athlete. You know, he's uh, uh, you know he's, he's a guy that that is, um, you know, almost uh, Russell Westbrook-like in his ability to his burst, his pop, his first step and then his ability to get up and, and rise off the floor and, and dunk on people. It's great to see it happen in a game. We've seen him practice, but that's probably the first uh, you know body-to-body -body one he's gotten in a game. And that was uh, you know just a really good performance. I mean, we, we played a really good SIU team and and um, you know I think we made them you know we talk a lot about one of the keys to winning or maybe the key to winning is to make your opponent play poorly. And uh, I thought we really made uh, SIU play poorly and, uh, and we played very well thus, thus the you know the 29 point margin. Big win for the Sycamores at home against SIU. Take a look at everyone chiming in. Swope, newcomer of the week after this performance as well. Coach Slomo there. Yeah, Slomo uh, just putting him in space, man. The, you know, the, the, that guard trio is special. When you look at Julian, Isaiah, uh, along with Ryan, uh, the, the way they, uh, you know, uh, the way they, they are able to comment each other, the way they play for another Jason Kent with a cut uh, on a drive there. The, the pieces have just, you know, to this point have fit well together. But the biggest piece, you know, and they, what people don't see is how hard these guys work on a day-to-day -day basis and um, the, the, the game reps that they bank and, and, and the intentionality and purpose that they practice with on a day-to-day -day basis. So when they do get out there and the lights are on, uh, they're able to have fun and, and, and go out and execute at a high level. And, and they, they put a lot in, pour a lot of themselves into that to, to make that possible. Big game at Bradley, you know, big game for Kim, but a big game because it's the first Road Valley game. You guys with a strong showing there, of course, as well. Yeah, Carver, you know, you can make a case is the hardest place in the league to play, right? I mean, they've only lost a handful of games the last couple of years there. And uh, national team TV game, great crowd, and I thought our first half was about as good as uh, you know as, as we could play at this point of the season. Uh, we were really good offensively, had really good burst and pop, and then I thought uh, you know defensively we were terrific. Second half uh, stumbled a little bit, but then we were able to kind of find our way and thought uh, really closed the game and made some big plays down the stretch. Then back home at Holman Center for a game against USI, which out of the gate you guys came out smoking hot. I know you love starting fast with some high-low action. More on that in a little bit. But a big showing against USI without, of course, Isaiah Swope as well. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Isaiah was uh, distraught to miss that one against his former team. But um, again, I think very similar to the 
Southern Illinois game where, where I think we did a good job really making them play poorly, did a good job on the defensive end, and that allowed us to really get going offensively. You know, for us, our defense uh, fuels our offense, and so our ability to make sure, you know, we're getting out, getting stops, securing rebounds, that allows us to get out in transition where our, our speed and our skill, which I think are probably our two greatest strengths offensively, uh, can really shine. You know, um, basketball's a game where, you know, both ends of the floor are really tied together. You know, if, if you're bad defensively, it's going to hurt your offense because nobody's good at taking the ball to the net all the time. And if you're bad offensively and you're taking bad shots or turning the ball over or constantly missing, you're going to be constantly in transition. So, um, you know, it, it really works in, in concert. And I thought, um, you know, we did a really good job defensively, took them out of what they want to do. Uh, it allowed us to fuel our offense. And I thought, guys, I mean, 27 assists on 35 made field Pretty goals. Good. You know, yeah, guys sharing the basketball and, and uh, running with great pace and space. And then, uh, they just did a good, really good job of attacking them and, and, and reading how the defense was playing them and, and making the right reads. Hey, we are just getting rolling on our Sycamore Spotlight with head basketball coach Josh Shirt. A little later, we're going to look ahead to a big upcoming schedule. They prepare to wrap up December in a big way. We're also going to pick Coach's brain in our film breakdown segment. Up next, we spotlight a Sycamore who continues to do booth big things on the court and, of course, above the rim when Sycamore Spotlight comes right back. Driving home, I went a different way. And I had a green light going through the intersection. Last thing I remember, had been hit by a semi. We were picked up and dropped by at least four other law firms. And then finally, we reached out to Team Green. And I can't tell you how exceptional they are. And they were able to get me what I deserved. I can't recommend them enough. At Great Dane, we are proud to invest in our people and community. Now announcing new starting wages for trailer assemblers and welders. Assemblers earn up to $23 an hour, and welders earn up to $27 an hour, with no experience necessary to apply. Enjoy great health benefits, advancement opportunities, 401k, pension, and more. We need the makers, people who are ready to make a difference. We need you. Apply today at greatdane.com slash careers. We were choosing colors for the house, and I stopped and looked at Mike and said, We're really doing this, aren't we? The process was challenging, but Riddell was there for us every step of the way. The mortgage, closing, they eased our stress. It made sense when Mike said, We're really doing this. Mortgage loans made easy from Riddell. Making friends since 1885. Hey, this is Todd Hine with LaborLink. And I'm Coach Schertz with your Indiana State men's basketball team. With the Sycamores, the success of each individual player depends on the performance of the entire team. That's right, Todd. Teamwork makes the dream work. And if you're looking for a job and want your own employment team, then LaborLink has a spot for you. Start work right away with LaborLink. And come out and support Terre Haute's team, the Sycamores. Sycamore Spotlight is brought to you by Great Dane, Rydell National Bank, Labor Link, and Dorset Automotive. Welcome back to Sycamore Spotlight. He is the head basket coach, basketball coach of the ISU Sycamores, Josh Shirts. We're talking all things ISU basketball. Happy to have Coach on this week. Now time for our player spotlight. We are shining some light on a player who, as you said, Coach, you've told me he's probably maybe not the team's most important player, best player, but he's probably the most important player, I could say, in junior. Jason Kent, who has certainly grown up before our eyes in the second season in your system, Coach. He really has. His, uh, he's, he's made unbelievable strides. Talking about a guy starring in his role. Um, you know, when you're looking at a team, it's like putting a puzzle together, and the pieces have to fit each other. And, um, you know, and so it's not always the best players. It's how the, the players, you know, complement each other and make each other better. Um, with this group, Jason's done such an unbelievable job. Uh, we have we have multiple guys. Look at Julian, Isaiah, Ryan, that are really ball dominant guys. And you got a big and Robbie, who's the hub of the offense, who has the ball in his hands a ton as well. So that fifth guy has to be a guy that can score without the basketball. It's got to be a guy uh, that doesn't need plays called for him. And uh, Jason, when you look at the way he's scoring, I mean, he's scoring off cuts. He's scoring in transition. He's scoring off offensive rebounds. He's scoring off paint to great threes. Um, his efficiency level is remarkable. He's leading the league in field goal percentage, leading the league in double-doubles, leading the league in dunks. Um, he's playing at an all-conference level, and it's just 
great to see him because, you know, a big part of, of player development to me is, is a guy's self-awareness. And, and self-awareness is understanding, you know, what do I do best and how do I get to that as often as possible? Uh, Jason here in year two has certainly been able to get to that uh, quite often. And his game is well-rounded. He can do a lot of different stuff for us. And that doesn't even include like, what he does for us defensively where he's been uh, absolutely phenomenal for us on that end of the floor at 6'9". And his versatility to be able to guard all these different positions. I was going back the last week, I think, of the loose balls. You touched on that, the Northern Illinois game. It, mm -hmm. I think you guys had nine loose balls. Kent was after five of them, I think. That yep. just speaks to willing to do anything and everything. Then he's averaging 28 and a half minutes per game for yes. you guys as well. Yeah, uh, he's playing tons of minutes. And, and uh, yeah, it was just so many intangible things to winning, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, people tend to focus on that. Uh, stat in the far, far, you know, right of the box sure. score, right? You know, how many points you have, and that dictates, you know, how good a player you are. And if, you know, everybody just, oh, you had 20 points, you're a good player. You had 10 points, you're not as good. Or, and, and it, you know, if you know ball, uh, you know there's a lot of ways to impact winning, to put your fingerprints on a game. Jason Ken, through his defense, the switching, the ability to guard multiple positions, what he does for us on the defensive glass, the offensive glass, the cutting piece, uh, how all that, um, you know, fits in and complements the guys around it. Him. Um, you know, like you said, uh, the, the starting lineup, I don't know that it works without him because he's kind of the linchpin that, that ties all that together and allows us to play you know, three combo guards and Robbie, uh, who are all unique in their own way, but his, his versatility is kind of that Swiss Army knife that allows that to, to, to work and, and, and has made the starting lineup, I think, you know, what it's been here to this, this part of the season. Movement without the basketball, too, is key. I know he, he moves well without the basketball because you got a lot of guards, so obviously they're going to have the ball in their hands a lot of the time, too. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's such an instinctual cutter, um, you know, and you can't really teach that. I mean, people have that, they don't. But not only is he an instinctual cutter, he's six foot nine doing it. You know, so it's different. It's one thing to be able to cut, but when you're a six nine target, uh, that makes things so much easier. Um, he, he, he is constantly looking for opportunities to cut, but he's also a gazelle in transition. He runs as hard as he can. He gets easy layups in transition. Hands. He's terrific on the offensive glass. He just finds ways to score where it's not, hey, let's let's run these plays for Jason Kenner. He's going to come off and try to take, you know, 15 dribbles. I mean, he, he doesn't do what Isaiah does, but Isaiah can't do what he does. And he can't do what Julian does, but neither can, you know. So they all kind of fit in terms of, hey, I can do this. And, and, and his cutting amplifies their passing and, and, and downhill skills, but their downhill skills and, and passing amplify his cutting. So it's how it works in concert and, and, and so far uh, so good. But he's been, he's been tremendous uh, here through this uh, first 10 games, and I think he's just going to continue to get better and better. Can't wait to see what he does as the schedule kicks up a notch. Hey, that will do it for our player spotlight on Sycamore Spotlight. Much more to come on the Sycamores with Coach Shirts. A little later, we will take a look at that big December, early January schedule for ISU. Up next, though, we get down to the X's and O's in our film breakdown segment when Spotlight rolls back right after this. Looking for your next used vehicle? Make the winning drive to the Wabash Valley's largest dealer, Dorset Automotive. We buy more so you can save more. With over 300 used vehicles, Dorset has something for everyone in every budget. And we'll do whatever it takes to get you the lowest payment in the valley. Plus, you're backed by our exclusive 5-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty. So hurry to Dorset today. driving home, I went a different way, and I had a green light going through the intersection. The last thing I remember, had been hit by a semi. We were picked up and dropped by at least four other law firms. And then finally, we reached out to Team Green, and I can't tell you how exceptional they are. And they were able to get me what I deserved. I can't recommend them enough. At Great Dane, we are proud to invest in our people and community. Now announcing new starting wages for trailer assemblers and welders. Assemblers earn up to $23 an hour, and welders earn up to $27 an hour, with no experience necessary to apply. Enjoy great health benefits, advancement opportunities, 401k, pension, and more. We need the makers, people who are ready to make a difference. We need you. Apply today at greatdane.com slash careers. We were choosing colors for the house, and I stopped and looked at Mike and said, We're really doing this, aren't we? The process was challenging, but Riddell was there for us every step of the way. The mortgage, 
closing. They eased our stress. It made sense when Mike said, We're really doing this. Mortgage loans made easy from Riddell. Making friends since 1885. Welcome back to Sycamore Spotlight. We are talking, of course, all things ISU basketball. Time to draw, dive into the drawing board a little bit with Coach and Spotlight. A couple of plays that are standing out over these last few games or so, starting with a big win against Toledo at the Ball Dogs Classic out in Las Vegas. We'll take you to the second half. Sycamore's in Toledo in a good one. This play kind of sums up how good these ISU guys can be. It is our film breakdown brought to you by Dorset Automotive. Coach, take it away. Yeah, we're just playing out of our five action here, which is our five out, and, and they ran down screens both ways. You can see Toledo going under, put two to the ball. Robbie tries to pop. They full rotate. Swope cuts. Ryan Conn with a drive, and then just Jason Kent with a really timely cut. You know, that's just them playing out of this. Our five out action. We get down screens both sides. Jason tries to slip it. Again, they go underneath, and there's two to the ball right there. Robbie could have seam rolled. He popped. You know, they took that away. Great drive by Ryan, and and Jason sees the opportunity, and that's where he's just been so opportunistic. Uh, you know, because we're just playing out of this. Um, you know, we don't do a great job out of our five action there originally, but. Again, just watching him, he sees the opportunity to cut and move. His guy kind of turns his head on that drive. Jason just, we call that a circle cut. You know, his cuts in front of him, face cuts him uh, for a wide open layup. And that's just guys playing out of that organized randomness. You know, the five is the concept. And then it's just making the reads out of that. Again, you know, Robbie just chose to pop, probably should have rolled. Not a great read. Ryan, great drive, draws two. Jason Ken sees that he can face cut his guys. Guys below him does a great job and easy two points. And that's just them, you know, making great plays. So, that, so that's one play. Jason Kent seems to be the theme of this week's show. We're talking about Jason Kent, although there were so many ISU Sycamores that are involved on this winning streak. Next play we're about to show, it's the start of the game against USI over the weekend, and that's another good breakdown, Coach. we we'll take you to the start of the game. Saturday, a big one, good crowd at home and center. Student section was fired up against USI. Yes. Uh, I, if I remember this play correctly, the first play of the game, we usually script these out, a little stagger screen. We slip it. We try to get to that high pick and roll, get the ball to Robbie in the seam. Great cut for Jason Kent. So we're we're just coming out and trying to execute. We run a, a stagger. Uh, we're going to ghost that out. Uh, we know they're going to play a high, what we call like a high drop, like a lateral coverage on the ball screen. Um, we want to take advantage of that. So the stagger. Uh, we're going to ghost that out. That was just part of the play. The high lateral, get the ball to Robbie in the pocket, and then read from there. We ran a shooter on the baseline through. Uh, we ran, you know, an exit screen on the baseline right there to kind of take the help away. And then Jason read it, cut to the rim for, for a layup. So, you know, we, we, we choreographed those things, but, you know, the players, ones that got to go out and, and bring it to life and make it happen. You know, you can draw up the best plays in the world, but, you know, the players, ones who do it, we kind of just know what the coverage is, what's the solution. And you're trying to generate, you know, we talk all the time, you know, basketball's a game, easy baskets. The, the deal is to try to get as many easy baskets as you can and never to allow easy baskets. And, you know, the, the highest value shot in basketball is a no-dribble layup. And we led the country last year in Division I basketball and no-dribble layups. And we're constantly looking, you know, both plays, you know, that was the end result, right? It was a no-dribble layup and our ability to cut and move out the ball. Those guys reading how the defense is playing them, what are the solutions? They do a great job. And, and uh, that was just them taking something we drew up and then bringing it to life out there on the court, taking advantage of the coverage and, and uh, understanding what the reads were. And so credit to, to obviously, uh, Julian making the play to Robbie uh, with two to the ball. And then once you have a trap like that, um, it's the pass out of the trap that now you're going to attack it. So Julian's job was to get the ball to Robbie. He did. And then Robbie's job is to read it. And, of course, he made the right read, but so did Julian. Uh, so did uh, Jason Kent out of the corner. Got it done. Love to see that. Hey, much more coming up on Sycamore Spotlight. ISU prepares for their home stretch in December. Then conference play picks up in a big way. We'll look ahead when we come back. I'm driving home a different way and I had a green light going through the intersection. Last thing I remember had been hit by a semi. We were picked up and dropped by at least four other law firms. And then finally we reached out to Team Green and I can't tell you how exceptional they are. And they were able to get me what I deserved. I can't recommend them enough. 
looking for your next used vehicle? Make the winning drive to the Wabash Valley's largest dealer, Dorset Automotive. We buy more so you can save more. With over 300 used vehicles, Dorset has something for everyone in every budget. And we'll do whatever it takes to get you the lowest payment in the valley. Plus, you're backed by our exclusive five-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty. So hurry to Dorset today. Dorset At Great Dane, we are proud to invest in our people and community. Now announcing new starting wages for trailer assemblers and welders. Assemblers earn up to $23 an hour, and welders earn up to $27 an hour, with no experience necessary to apply. Enjoy great health benefits, advancement opportunities, 401k, pension, and more. We need the makers, people who are ready to make a difference. We need you. Apply today at greatdane.com slash careers. Hey, this is Todd Hine with LaborLink. And I'm Coach Schertz with your Indiana State men's basketball team. With the Sycamores, the success of each individual player depends on the performance of the entire team. That's right, Todd. Teamwork makes the dream work. And if you're looking for a job and want your own employment team, then LaborLink has a spot for you. Start work right away with LaborLink. And come out and support Terre Haute's team, the Sycamores. Final segment for Sycamore Spotlight. Sycamores have 10 games under their belt. They're preparing for a big stretch to close out December, starting with a big one with Ball State and Indy. First up, it's a huge one coming up against the Cardinals. Another game against the MAC, but what an atmosphere it can be in a showcase for your team coach at Gainbridge. Yeah, it should be, I mean, arguably outside of the NCAA tournament, the biggest stage we can play on. Uh, sold out crowd, uh, playing Indy, playing in Gainbridge, playing a really good team in Ball State. Um, great opportunity for our guys to showcase our program on a, on a, on a huge stage. Can't wait for that one. And then the Sycamores will come back home. Quick turnaround. We've seen some quick turnarounds. They had a break, of course, between this week between USI and Ball State. They will play Tennessee State coming up on Tuesday. And Santa Claus is going to be in the building, I hear, Coach. Hopefully we get a packed student section. There's a good opportunity for students to come watch the game, local high school students. But a good one Tuesday night at Holman Center as well. Yeah, super athletic team. Uh, hopefully we get a great crowd even without our students there. We need to, we need to get that energy in the building. So hopefully uh, the high school students come out and teachers. and uh, But hopefully we have a great environment to, to kick us into Christmas break. But very good team in Tennessee State, uh, six and five so far. S really athletic group. We'll have our hands full. May or may not be sitting on Santa, Coach, after the game. We'll see how these couple of games go. Depends if we Ball win State. or lose at all. Santa, de Santa, Santa lap depends on, he, you know. He, he's a busy man. He's got a lot going on <laughs> next week for sure. Finally, uh, just a little game here on the last Saturday of the year, Indiana State versus Michigan State. This game, Coach, means so much to so many, but what an opportunity. Another big game. Guys love seeing this on the schedule. What an opportunity for your guys. They played before? I think, but it's oh, been a while. Okay, I, 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 I want to say was there a, a lot of people Michigan watched State? it maybe, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe there's some maybe that may have some good players. I can't remember who. Right? No, uh, yeah, what an opportunity to, to go to East Lansing. Um, first time since 79. Um, they've got, you know, obviously an iconic program. Um, you know, they've off to not the, their, their best start, but, you know, considered to be a Final Four level team. It's a great opportunity for our guys uh, to play a, a tremendous team on their home floor. Um, I know our guys will be, be super excited for that, you know, We've come a long way since Alabama. It'll be a similar test for us to go play a, an elite Power Five school on their on their home floor, and a great a great challenge, but a great opportunity for us as well. Turnaround from East Lansing will be key because the Sycamores will come right back home and get back in Missouri Valley Conference play with another in-state rival. Here's how January and the start of 2024 will shake out as well. Evansville, of course, January 3rd, and then another road trip, Coach. We've talked about you've had a couple of long road trips. you got Northern Iowa and Drake. Get that trip out of the way, too. Yeah, the, you know, you're very lucky uh, to be able to go to DeKalb and Peoria for five days and follow it up with Des Moines and uh, uh, Cedar Falls. So, uh, five-day roadie in, uh, in Iowa, God's country, so we'll look forward to it. Mid-January has a couple of more games, some big games, of course, with Belmont and Missouri State, some special tributes in between. Hey, if you would like to purchase tickets to any of the Indiana State home games, check out the Sycamores, as you should. Good and Holman Center. You can head to GoSycamores.com. It should be a lot of fun. Coach, this is our second Sycamore Spotlight. Not bad. Good start to the season. Yeah, you've been the good luck charm, so we've got to keep this going if we keep playing this well. Can't wait to see what happens. Sycamores will be rolling into December and January. You can catch us in January for our next Sycamore Spotlight. For Coach, for everyone, thanks for watching this week's show. Thanks for watching Sycamore Spotlight. Stay up to date with Indiana State Athletics at GoSycamores.com.